Margaret Lesk, Young Corla, uh, Minister, first of all, can I thank you and all the health professionals and frontline staff in the progress that is being made over the last number of months in terms of the vaccination rollout. And I think it's, it's very heartening to see us rolling through the different age cohorts and people getting those much needed jabs. And I think that needs to be acknowledged. So thank you to, to yourself, your department, and all those in the front line. Um, Minister, I just have three brief questions and I'll allow you as much time as I can. Uh, the first one is in relation to the possibility of 24-hour vaccination centres. Uh, could you expand on you know, their anticipated rollout, where they might be, um, and how quickly we might see them? The second question is in relation to um, support, your, your own uh, position, I suppose, in, in, in support for waiving intellectual property rights in terms of the COVID vaccine. Um, and my final question is in relation to maternity services again. Um, last April, we were lucky enough to have uh, a baby girl. So um, I suppose we, we had a child during COVID ourselves. And I, I suppose we think back on the difficulties that we had at that time. And look, I was lucky enough at that stage to be able to come in for the, for the birth of, of, of my child. Um, so I can empathise with, with, with much of what has been said here by other deputies. And we are expecting a third child in September. So, um, you know, it would be great to get some clarification on, I suppose, a more streamlined approach in terms of our maternity services. And I suppose what role potentially a digital green cert might play in innovating of services like that. And would it, would it permit people to attend for services like that into the future? Come on, Margaret. Thank you. Minister, just, just two minutes. Thank you very much, Deputy. Um, can I start by uh, offering you uh, my congratulations on the birth uh, of your daughter some time ago? And again, the, uh, the, the future birth this year, uh, I, I had my, my wife and I had our first two children very close together. And uh, while I congratulate you, Deputy, um, we might have a conversation later on about, uh, about coping mechanisms for the, uh, for the very long tunnel that you're about to, uh, that, that you're about to enter. Um, in terms of the 24-hour vaccination centres, uh, this came from a, a minutes of a NEFIT meeting where they were discussing it and, and, and may have contacted the HSE about it. Uh, we may or may not need 24-hour centres. There's very significant capacity in place between the GPs the vaccination centres, uh, many of which are running seven days a week and very long hours, and the pharmacy network, which has yet to be brought online, and I'd like to see that happen. Um, so what I can say, Deputy, is if it is needed to run the vaccine centres 24 hours a day, we will absolutely do that. Uh, at, present we, at present, we don't, and there is a lot of, there is a lot of uh, capacity there. In terms of the waiver for intellectual property rights, personally, I'm in favour of it. I don't think it's a silver bullet. I don't think if we do it, we'll suddenly have manufacturing of these very complex uh, compounds uh, all over the place. The EU is setting up a task force to look at all the bottlenecks. There are issues around uh, manufacturing sites. There's issues around supply of raw materials and then distribution, particularly when you're talking about um, vaccines, some of which have to be stored at very, very low, low temperatures. Uh, the government is working with the EU on it. The EU's view is that actually within the existing TRIPS agreement, there is latitude for governments to uh, proceed. But to be honest, it's a, it's a whole system solution that is, that, that is required. But what I want to see, what the Irish government wants to see, is a global programme that, that gets everybody, everybody vaccinated. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. Thank you.